Amen. Absolutely, God is worthy of our praise. Good to see all you guys this morning. I've just got just a couple of brief comments I want to make before I retire uh, this portion of things over to some other folks. And I just want to say, first of all, to you, isn't it just, it's just so good to be together. So good to see each other and to kind of catch up with each other and, and just be a part of each other's lives. And what we do here in this big room is important to us. It kind of equips us for the week and it equips us to be uh, ready to go. But folks, really where we connect is in a smaller kind of context. We've been talking about for the last two weeks being a church that connects with each other, connects with the world around us, but a church that just, just connects. Two weeks ago, we let Paul lead us through 2 Corinthians 13, verses 11 through 14, as he talked about the atmosphere of a church that really is connecting with people. And then last week, we looked at uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 3 through 8, and, and chapter 4, verses 4 through 13, to kind of get the dynamic of the source of joy and why it is that we just feel good when we're together. It's because of that connection. We are about groups here at Sugar Grove. It is a key part of our, of our connection. A lot of us, we have two services, one at first and one at second, of course. And sometimes our only connection uh, through the week with those folks that are in the other service is when we're involved in those in those smaller groups. So we're going to talk about groups just a little bit this morning as we come in off the summer uh, vacation. We're getting ready to kind of get back into the routine of some stuff. And I'm going to introduce the first fellow to you, and he'll introduce the second fellow to you. So Tim Shoulders, if you'd come up here just for a moment. If you're a member here, you already know Tim pretty well. He's served this congregation in a lot of capacities over the last several years. But most recently, he's been our body life minister. A lot of responsibilities that are involved in that. But most uh, directly, at least as far as what we're talking about right now is concerned, is that he leads a lot of our connection stuff. Uh, he is uh, uh, the one that follows up with our guests. He's the one that helps all of us connect with various ministries or groups. And as such, he is our minister on staff that kind of leads us through groups, life groups, uh, fellowship groups, uh, ministry groups, prayer groups, study groups. Here's the guy. So he's going to share with us a little bit about groups and what's coming up on the horizon. He's going to introduce us to somebody else. So, brother, if you would. Still, thank you. The very first thing I want to do this morning is I want to introduce you to Michael Pothoff. We are privileged here at Sugar Grove that Michael, yeah, come on up. Michael and his wife Ruth, who is not supposed to be here, but she's here anyway because he can tell you more about that, uh, came to Sugar Grove earlier in the year, at the beginning of this year. Uh, very talented person, has a rich background in preaching and in the business world. Uh, it started becoming apparent real quick that he's just got a passion for people. And he started telling us, you know what, I want to be used however you guys need to use me. And, and I'm, a lot of humility there, of just, you know, whatever God needs to do, whatever you want to use me for. And one day, Mark Howell said, you know what, I think he's perfect for what we're chewing on. And so he's going to come in and be working with us in small groups, helping connect people into small groups, use, leveraging that people passion, and also... Uh, working with our small group leaders to help develop relationships with our small group leaders and work with those guys. So what I want him to do, I, I want you to get his name and face together because you're going to be seeing more of him, but I also want you to hear his heart because he's got a cool heart. Well, first of all, um, Ruth and I are so excited to be at Sugar Grove. Uh, and it's been a tremendous blessing for us. And, you know, one of the things that really opened my eyes to this church was just how open everyone seems to be and how connected people seem to be and just authentic for that matter. Um, that means a lot to me. And a little bit about my story. Um, I grew up in a home that was not Christian in any way. Uh, my dad is a pretty militant atheist and so was not only not teaching me anything about God, but was teaching me that God wasn't real and that church was foolishness and we should never be a part of things like that. Well, over time, my parents got divorced, and there's a lot more to that story than that, but, but just know that there was a lot of dysfunction, and, and that caused me to seek out for something different in this life, um, to try and fill that void that I, I found I had in my heart. And so that led me through some different families to the church. And as, we, as I began to connect to the church, um, the thing that really helped me see past my ignorance of Scripture and my lack of understanding of, of song, and what in the world's a bomb of Gilead anyway, right? I had no idea, believe me. I'm not sure I still do to this day. But all of that came, became real to me when I started connecting to different families and small groups because all of a sudden I saw these real relationships. And I might be skeptical at that time about different things, but I saw the authenticity 
of those relationships, the power of, of being close to one another and sharing your struggles and saying, hey, I'm not perfect. I, I need help or my family's going through this or my marriage is struggling or whatever it might be. Or maybe it's I'm having a great time. And that really woke me up and, and let me see, hey, this is real. Christ is real. And we all need him. Amen. And that excites my heart. So, so what I wanted to share with you is another part about me. And Ruth will laugh at this, but I'm a nerd, right? I, I love the Discovery Channel, and I love uh, watching all those things, and she hates it. So um, she kind of, I know she loves me when she kind of just smiles and sits by me and watches that kind of stuff. But you ever seen the, the whole African safari Discovery Channel theme where they're showing, you know, all the different wildlife out there? I love that stuff. Well, have you seen that where, where they kind of stalk and follow the lions around? And they don't edit it as far as I know. I mean, they show you everything. And... They show you how the lion kind of picks out its prey. And what does it do? It doesn't just jump in the middle of the, the strongest and the best. But what it does is it looks for those that are weak and sick and maybe the older of the herd or the young babies of the herd. And that's the one that it picks out to, to destroy and devour. Well, First Peter chapter 5 tells us that Satan is like a roaring lion looking to devour us. And perhaps you're here today, and maybe you're not real connected. Maybe you've tried a small group, and it just didn't work. You didn't mesh for whatever reason. That's okay. Uh, but I encourage you to try again. Or maybe you've never done that. I encourage you to do it because we need each other. We need to share our hearts with another and our struggles. And small groups just provide a great avenue for us to do that. Um, I just wanted to share that with you today, and I share Tim's passion and Mark's passion, and really so many other people in this room's passion to do this. So thank you for that opportunity. I am very excited to see how God's going to use Michael uh, and Ruth here at SureGrow, and I'm so excited to have them working here relationships are so key, so vital to everything, uh, that relationships really do keep us alive. They, uh, God wants to be in relationship with us. That if you think about it, it relationships are at the key of, of Christianity. The last couple of years, we've been using this logo for life groups. It shows a tree growing, roots down underground, you can see them, and then up above ground, you see the, the limbs growing out, the leaves growing in the light. This logo is symbolic of our life in Christ together as the body of Christ. Let me show you a little bit more about it. That the roots symbolize the development of Christ-centered relationships, of the, the connection with each other. The limbs growing up above symbolize our growth in God. That the, the growth in God, the growing in God's light producing leaves and ultimately producing fruit. Literally, what it takes for us to grow in God is each other. That if we try to do God, if we try to do church without relationships with each other, we could potentially end up with a tree that's kind of withering, that it doesn't go very, it's stunted. Uh, that, you know, literally, if we just come to Sunday morning worship, but there's nothing else to it, that could be a problem. Uh, that relationships are so key and so vital. So the question is, how do we form, uh, what does it take to form Christ-centered community? I think there are a couple of basic questions that pop up when we talk about Christ-centered community. And these are questions we ask each other. How are you doing? How are you doing with God? We need people asking us, how are you doing? What, how's everything going with your life? But in turn, we need to be asking others, how are you doing? How's everything going with your life? Because if you haven't noticed, the way relationship works is it goes both directions. Uh, that, that relationship takes that forming both directions. That the question of how are you doing is asking questions such as, what are you struggling with in life? What, what is just causing you pain in life right now? What, are your, what is joy in life? What's going good? It, it is sharing life together. Christian community is so important. Uh, but, and this is kind of the interesting irony of it, the goal 
of connecting is not the connections. The goal of Christ-centered relationships with each other is not the ultimate goal. Mark was alluding to that earlier, that the goal of our relationships is to spur one another on toward love and good deeds. The goal of our Christian relationships is to encourage each other, to help each other, so that we can then turn around and grow in God's light, so that we can produce fruit, ultimately. That if our Christian relationships with each other, all that they do is focus upon that relationship, it's, it's missing the point of why God puts us together. Um, so I've got a couple of questions for you that I want to throw out to you. One of them is, are you connecting in Christ-centered relationships with others at Sugar Grove? Just at a very foundational level, we need, we need people that have our back. Do you have other people here at Sugar Grove who've got your back? People that know how you're doing. People that know where you're struggling. People that know where the things are going great. People that know where to pray about each other with. And then in turn, are you able to do that back? When we're gathered together like we are here on Sunday morning in groups of hundreds, what we experience is the energy of the church together focused upon praising and worshiping God. But do you realize what we can't do? What we can't do on Sunday mornings is turn to each other and say, hey, what's going on in your life this week? Because when you start asking those questions of how are you doing, it leads to the questions of how are you and God getting along right now? And that's so vital to ultimately be spiritually connected to each other. How are you doing? Um, are you connecting in Christ-centered relationships with others, others at Sugar Grove? The, um, you'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that's in a small group here that would be able to turn around and say, no one really cares about me at church. Or that would be able to say, you know what? I missed the last few weeks and nobody even noticed I was gone. If you're not in a group, that can happen. Because, because you can get lost in the hundreds. But when you're in a group of ten, you're not going to get lost. Because you've got somebody that intimately knows you there, that intimately cares about you. And then in turn, hopefully you're caring about them. Um, second question, are you allowing your relationship with others at Sugar Grove to spur you on to love and good deeds? Or is the focus of the relationships in your group that you're in just on the group itself? If there was one thing I could encourage and challenge all of our groups at Sugar Grove to be about this year, it would be allow God to take those relationships and produce fruit. So that in other words, literally, as you're forming relationships in your life group, in your missional group, don't let it end there. Let that be the beginning point so that you turn around and reach out. You know, the Great Commission, you guys remember the Great Commission, go into all the world, tell people that, that the Great Commission, what the Great Commission asks of us is don't be focused on yourself. It asks us to turn around and see what God needs us to see Spread the message of God as he needs to see it. I would challenge you guys, let your group this year be more than your group. Let it do things beyond your group. Another question for you. Are you developing Christ-centered relationship with the people you work together with in a mission or ministry at Sugar Grove? There are tons of ministries and missions here at Sugar Grove. Lots of different kinds of groups. If you guys haven't noticed... There is not just one kind of group at Sugar Grove. We've got life groups, we've got missional groups, we've got ministry groups, we've got groups working on mission projects. There are all kinds of groups that go on. And a lot of people are in more than one kind of group. But my question is, for you guys that are in a ministry group or a mission group, what's the chance that you could come unfocused from your task for a few minutes in turn, and develop relationship with each other. Ask the questions of community. How are you doing? How are you and God doing? Because if you can stop your 
your task, you know, our, whatever your focus is, and focus on each other for a minute, God can use that relationship t- to make us way more than we would otherwise be. Which is a good thing. Which is a very good thing. Final question here. Are you allowing God to use you to draw others into Christ-centered relationships? Uh, it's real interesting because every year, as, as we have groups, there are some people that God has just put it on their heart to step up and start connecting people in Christ-centered relationships by leading a group. Uh, a year ago, the last four years, Michelle and I, along with some other people, had been, uh, had the middle school life group at our house, and the repairs are almost done at our house now. Uh, I'm telling you, whew. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Got to be real close to a group of kids that we had them all the way through middle school, and as they were getting ready to come into high school, so a lot of good things. The adults we worked with in that group turned into our people. In fact, that group of adults that, that we were together with, we still hang out with. We, Saturday night, we went out to dinner with a group of them. That, that, that when your hearts form together, you walk through life together, encouraging each other, being there for each other. So as we wrapped down that middle school group, a year ago, we teamed up with Ron and Cheryl Pierce and said, hey, let's start a new life group. And so Michelle and I and Ron and Cheryl got together and prayed about it, talked about it, and started inviting people. And people started coming. And the second week into it, we started just suddenly, all the people we had invited and they'd come, find out one of them finds out they're transferring to the Philippines. One of them is like, what is this? And the next thing you know, we didn't have a group. Again, it was just the Pierce's and us. And so we started, we started hanging out at, at uh, Freebirds all year, eating burritos on Sunday night and having our group there. And interestingly enough, we developed a ministry to the very unusual manager of Freebirds. And, but, you know, that's okay. Because then at the beginning of the summer, God just suddenly said it's time. And we started inviting people and our group started coming together wonderfully so. And, and, and it has a lot to do with the right people coming around. In fact, one of the things that we're doing with my group this year is that uh, we are changing the way we're helping people that have an interest in starting a small group get started, that we're bringing those people into my small group, and you're going to be a part of my small group for a while, and then we want to bless you and send you off uh, and get you going. And so one of my invitations is, if you're interested in starting a small group, Come talk to Michael and I. We're going to be down here after, after worship is over, and we, we'd just love to talk to you and tell you more about that. But I would also love to encourage any of you that are in groups to think about that, of think about allowing your group to be something that connects to other people, that begins to bless other people by developing Christ-centered community with them uh, and, and by starting a new group. Uh, because as you think about it, if, if you have a group of people and you invite other people in to connect with you, what happens is you expand the borders of the kingdom, literally, that you are bringing in more people. And groups don't have to just be from Sugar Grove. They can be anybody God leads you to, which is one of the challenges to you. Allow This year, I challenge you guys to allow God to help you see who that he needs you to see, to invite, to come into Christian community with you. Uh, because God, God uses our relationships with, with each other to produce some really good things. So, as I wrap up here, I've got an invitation for you. If, if you've got a prayer need, if you want to put on Christ in baptism, whatever it is, we're going to have an invitation song here in a minute. And we're going to invite you to come down and pray. If... You want some help connecting up in Christ-centered community here at Sugrove? Come down after we close and talk to talk to Michael and I. We've got uh, we'd love to talk to you and help you in that process of help you connect. Or if God's put it on your heart to connect to uh, uh, to leading a group, we would love to talk to you about that too. So I'm here to tell you. Uh, 
our connection as the body of Christ is huge. That God can use our connection to each other to change the world. I challenge you, don't just let church be a Sunday morning only thing. Because as a Sunday morning only thing, you've got roots that aren't going to support any growth up top. Because it's a lack of roots. And, and, and so I challenge you, if you're in a group, let God turn around and reach out to you. So my invitation here is, if any prayer need, stand up, stand as, come down front as we stand and sing. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, tower of refuge and strength, let every breath, all that I have.